Officials in Pakistan are praising locals for helping a daring rescue of people who were trapped in a dangling cable car. All eight, including six school children, were pulled from the gondola hundreds of metres over a remote valley. The operation took a whopping 15 hours. Pakistan watched in horror as a trip to school turned into a terrifying ordeal. A support cable for the gondola snapped leaving six children and two adults dangling more than 300 metres above a ravine. A military helicopter rushed to the rescue, plucking one child to safety. But as the sun set, the helicopter mission became more risky, forcing rescuers to use the remaining cables to zipline five more people back down. Eventually, it was locals who talked the last two into being saved. The military became helpless because the people inside the gondola refused to be harnessed. They tried very hard to convince them, for almost an hour. They had stopped the helicopter and were throwing ropes down to the stranded people, but they refused to comply. The local heroes are now being celebrated as those on board reflect on their ordeal. We were going to school around 7 in the morning. When the gondola was halfway there, its cable broke. It was dangling and I was terrified. It was like a doomsday for the area. Everyone rushed out of their homes. Children, mothers, sisters. Our children use the same cable car in the mornings and afternoons. Cable cars are vital in connecting villages in northern and mountainous areas of Pakistan, but they are often poorly maintained. Authorities have now ordered safety inspections of all mountain lifts. And journalist Nasheen Abbas has been following the rescue operation from Islamabad. Uh, Nasheen, it's remarkable, isn't it, that local volunteers were the ones who did a lot of the heavy lifting in this rescue effort? So it was a very long day yesterday. The military had been involved for hours attempting to rescue children and the two adults, and they were successful in doing so to some extent. Um, the operation went well into the night, and that's when the locals also stepped in and used zip lines to rescue the last three people. So it was definitely a joint effort and could not have been done without this kind of teamwork that we saw yesterday. Um, we also have to remember that the locals know the terrain, um, and they know the cable cars better than anyone else, as they are the ones who made them. Uh, so their knowledge and skills were important in this rescue mis uh, mission. Yeah, and of course, they're being praised as heroes for their efforts. Uh, now, looking ahead at how to make sure that something like this doesn't happen again, do authorities in Pakistan have a plan to prevent accidents like this in the future? So at the moment, the caretaker prime minister has asked that all cable cars and chairlifts be suspended. Um, these are areas where cable cars are used to aid transport because there are very few roads or bridges connecting the valleys to reach jobs, public services and families. So local people are left to just patch things together in the form of these unregulated cable cars that are made from scrap material. Whether there is a solid plan to address this issue is yet to be seen. The suspension of all cable cars is a solution prompted by local and international media scrutiny and is not backed by any long-term vision to provide an alternative. Um, one suspects that the, that the ban will work initially, but over time, as there is no practical alternative, the local people will begin running the cable cars again despite the suspension. Well, thank you very much for joining us on DW News with that update. That's journalist Nasheen Abbas in Islamabad. Thank you.